The intensity of surveillance in our modern age is only accelerating. And so today we're looking at how to acquire non-KYC Bitcoin from a Bitcoin ATM. Is it actually possible? Today we find out. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur of Bitcoin Plub and all around raging capitalist. And today I'm excited to explore the world of Bitcoin ATMs. And we'll talk about the motivation behind this and why having an option and perhaps making this your main option of acquiring non-KYC Bitcoin uh, is important and something that everyone should at least be aware of and be advised on how to do if they so find that appropriate for themselves. This is all about individual choice. Now, I was a bit naive walking into this, as you will see in the video, and so you won't want to miss uh, a thing as we find what sort of works and what doesn't uh, to accomplish this. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends and brethren. It is an absolute pleasure, as always, to have you. And for those new to the channel, I welcome you as well. I know there continue to be many of you, uh, over 80% of you in fact watching right this very moment are not currently subscribed. And so if you like this content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join us in our growing merry gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, including uh, sort of tutorials like this, uh, wallets, you know, how to acquire Bitcoin, how to secure it. Uh, Bitcoin Lightning Network, DeFi on Bitcoin, news analysis, you want it, I cover it. That is how this works. But with all that out of the way, let's jump in and just very briefly, I want to motivate the discussion for today. All right, so for some of you uh, privacy advocates, you know, you already know the importance of uh, kind of non-KYC and being mindful of your privacy when it comes to your business, right? But for those who may be a little bit newer to the topic, I just want to briefly go through why this is important at least to think about. Um, so KYC or know your customer refers to all the kind of information that you provide to centralized exchanges like Binance or Coinbase or whoever it is, uh, including you know your name, contact information, address, uh, perhaps even you know your financial uh, information, depending on kind of what tier or permission you want to uh, be in. But suffice it to say that KYC is a sort of general requirement, uh, you know, in the U.S. and also in countries around the world, uh, that generally any sort of financial entity of any kind. Uh, is typically going to be required to collect all this information about their customers. Now, some of you may watch that and say, yeah, you know what, I recognize that, but it sort of is what it is. And so my goal in this video is not to kind of lecture and say, thou shalt only buy Bitcoin in a non-KYC fashion. Um, by the way, there's other ways to you know, acquire Bitcoin in a non-KYC fashion. Mining would be kind of the uh, first thing that comes to mind. Um, you also have peer-to-peer uh, -peer marketplaces like BISC. I have done a video on that, uh, which I will link in the description down below as well. But rather, my goal for this video is to at least ensure that you're aware of the trade-offs and that you have in your arsenal a potential tool that you can use for the acquisition of non-KYC Bitcoin. And why is this important to folks? Well, it's no secret that we are sinking ever deeper into our current sort of surveillance state of the world. Governments around the world are in completely untenable fiscal positions. They have debt burdens that will never be paid back, and they know this. They have emerging assets like Bitcoin that serve as life rafts for people to flee what are depreciating and debasing fiat currencies. And so make no mistake, in any sort of late stage paradigm or monetary system, which is where we find ourselves in the current um, setup, as structured post-1971, governments and regulators have to implement more and more severe surveillance. They have to, because they have to be able to 
claw every bit of your wealth that they possibly can. And so this is why you see real proposals being sort of floated about the idea of making banks track, you know, much smaller transactions that you make, at least in the US. Um, for now, it seems that that is not going to come to pass. But the fact that these ideas are being discussed actively shows you the sort of path we're on. It is also of my opinion that China has really demonstrated to the world uh, this kind of surveillance playbook that I believe most governments, if not all, are going to ultimately adopt. And that includes things like the issuance of central bank digital currencies, which enables uh, your regulators to know absolutely everything that you do with your money um, and potentially forbid you from transacting you know, your money and using what's yours. And so none of this is to kind of encourage illicit activities, right? Uh, but it is my view and the view of many others that privacy is a fundamental human right. What you do with your money and what money you have, like that is your business. It's not anyone else's business. And so outside of mining, outside of selling businesses and services in exchange for Bitcoin, outside of peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces such as BISC, there, aren't, there really aren't that many other kind of options to acquire non-KYC Bitcoin. And so uh, Bitcoin ATMs are one of those options. Now, there's a whole host of providers at this point. I think one of the better resources that I will link you to in the description down below is coinatmradar.com. Uh, it has sort of coverage across, you know, really all the main operators of Bitcoin ATMs uh, globally. And so you should be able to find a operator that hopefully has something you know close to you. Uh, for our purposes today in this video, I'm going to be using CoinFlip ATM, uh, which I have found is one of the better ones that requires the least amount of information. We'll talk more about that. Uh, and their network is pretty solid here in the US. Now, different ATMs are gonna have different policies and so it's important that you kind of spend some time on Coin ATM Radar, which has some of the context around the types of verifications that are needed to buy Bitcoin, etc. cetera. Um, it's also the case that some ATMs are buy only, others have bi-directionality in terms of being able to buy and sell. Um, but again, main use case that we're thinking about here is buying. And so what do you need to get started? You need a Bitcoin address in order to receive the funds through. So I would recommend having um, you know, some app on your phone, right? Because you're gonna be there at the ATM. Uh, in today's video, I'm using Blue Wallet, but you could also, if you have an Android phone, use something you know, a little more privacy focused like uh, Samurai Wallet. Um, there's a number of options, but I would recommend kind of creating a new wallet, brand new wallet, new seed, uh, in which you're going to deposit all of the uh, kind of non-KYC Bitcoin. Um, it would not be a you know best practice to mix the non-KYC Bitcoin with the uh, with KYC Bitcoin that you've gotten perhaps from a centralized exchange because th because that would defeat the whole purpose of doing this. So create a brand new wallet in whatever mobile app is your favorite uh, to use and use that exclusively for your non-KYC Bitcoin. You'll also need some basic information. And so in the case of CoinFlip, and I think this is like the bare minimum, at least that I've found in my research, is a phone number and a name, right? So you could put, you know, whatever in for the name. It can't, it actually can't be like so silly. Like it, I don't think it can be like John Doe. Um, uh, and so you'll you'll see what I have used in, uh, in today's video, uh, but you know, choose like two of your friends' names and you know combine them together. That's, that's the name you can put in. And then importantly, for the phone number, I was a bit naive for today's video. Now, there are a number of ways that you can generate a throwaway phone number. Uh, I used TextNow, which is an app for uh, the US and Canada, uh, where you can get a local you know, free phone number and receive text messages to that, uh, et cetera. Um, there's also the Burner app where you can essentially do the same thing. Um, and there's even Google Voice, right, which you can create with kind of a throwaway Gmail account, um, et cetera. But as you will see in the, uh, in the live demonstration, in the field trip uh, that we took today, my text now phone number actually did not work. And I believe the reason after doing some research afterwards 
is that it's not it wasn't connected to any sort of sim card or provider uh or, or you know carrier right and so you know coin flip or whoever the operator is can identify that and see that okay this phone number is not connected to any actual again sim card or or active service cellular service uh and hence it appears that those are not supported so you may be thinking well what's the answer and the answer is something called text verified so i am going to link the following uh presentation so this is from our good pal x21 uh on twitter uh follow him for a ton of great privacy uh related pieces um but the i, I don't know if this is literally from him this is just a link that he provided uh and so it is a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to use text verified in tandem with coin flip in order to bypass this issue that I'm describing, where you can't just use a simple burner number with coin flip. And so what text verified is and how it works is they provide text verification services. And so they own and operate a number of actual live uh, phone numbers that you can use for text verification purposes. And so I'm not going to go into a sort of full tutorial on that uh, because this individual has laid it out very nicely in this pamphlet. Although I do acknowledge this is some, uh, some extra reading uh, that you'll, you'll have to do, uh, but it lays out the steps very nicely. You basically go on text verified, um, you know, you, you create an account with a throwaway email address. Uh, and then the way this works is through credit. So it's not free, um, but in my mind, I think still worth it, especially depending where you are on the privacy spectrum. And so you'll, you can load up uh, using Bitcoin. Um, and if, again, if you're, if you're doing this to be perfect on privacy, you can use CoinJoined Bitcoin to uh, pay for your credits. And so you load up your text verified uh, account with some credits in that way. And then finally, you'll use their little verifications tab to look up, uh, you know, coin flip, and then you're able to generate a phone number that you can put into the uh, coin flip interface. And then they will send you a code that you can use for that verification, and they'll deduct uh, the credits accordingly. So pretty clever uh, kind of work around there. Um, so again, I'm going to leave you those resources in the description down below. If you want to be perfect on privacy, that is the way to do it. Use text verified. To be fair, I have not kind of uh, researched how that works with you know other operators, and so I would encourage you to do your own kind of due diligence, do your own field work, uh, perhaps, you know, and and see what ATM operator is closest to you, uh, and then see if it's compatible with text verified. Um, my hope is that it should be. So with that motivation overview and sort of ingredient list for what you're going to need, let's go out into the wild and see what this looks like. All right, fam. So I've got two crisp $50 bills in my pocket and I cannot wait to cast them into the eternal fires of Bitcoin and exchange them for some sats. Let's check it out. All right, fam, so here is the interface. We tap this to get it started. Uh, we, of course, click Bitcoin. We are not interested in any of this other stuff. And we'll hit buy. Now, it comes up with some terms and conditions. Um, this kind of first piece is around warnings, around scams, you know, we're not responsible for you losing money, blah, 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 blah. And importantly, there is a difference here in transaction amounts. So anything under 900, at least in the case of CoinFlip, again, this may differ for other uh, providers, but anything under 900 is only going to require the phone number and name. Anything above that is going to require you registering as a sort of formal uh, coin flip customer, which will require additional identification such as a government issued ID. So keep that uh, limit in mind. And again, it, that is unfortunate, but it sort of is what it is. And you can see that played back here. 
and now we can put in the phone number. Now here is uh, me trying my <laughs> my little burner uh, number here, and I've got the password through text now. And so you'll see me put this in, then you'll see this error message that comes up saying this phone number cannot be used for business operations, please register. And so again, this is because this burner number is just not associated with any actual service. So I bite the bullet. I go back and do all these uh, steps and I use my actual mobile number, gasp, I know, but it is for you guys, it's because I love you, you know, it is what it is. So now this password does indeed work. Now out of spite, I'm still not gonna put my, uh, my formal name here. Today I'm identifying as uh, Chad Giggington. And so that's, uh, that's what it's gonna be uh, and that works. And then you can see there's this note around like updates and discounts. So I, no thanks, absolute hard no. Uh, and here is where you will input the destination address. And so it has a camera where you will place the phone up to the kiosk or the ATM. And so again, you could use whatever app you could, um, uh, but basically just go to your app, again, create a brand new wallet just for non-KYC, generate a receive address and hold that QR code up to the camera on the ATM. And so there we go. You can see that it's using quite a uh, high exchange rate. So they're basically making money off of offering you a much higher spot price of Bitcoin plus this 99 cent flat fee. And so I am now fumbling around trying to get my crisp uh, $50 in. So there's one. And there's two. And uh, this works out to be, I think, between like six to seven percent transaction fees. So it's it's not it's not negligible, right? Uh, but again, that is one of the trade offs. And there we go. So the the transaction has completed. And so now, if I go into my little no KYC wallet that I've created in Blue Wallet, I can see this pending transaction. So there you go. Again, pretty smooth process. Uh, I think the main hiccup, obviously, was the verification. And so use text verified. Uh, for that instead of what I did here. Um, and again, the, the other trade-off is that um, you have lower limits of what you can actually buy and you have higher fees for sure. Um, but all that being said, I think this was a, uh, a, pretty, a pretty good process. Let's go ahead now and close this video out. All right, my friends, there you have it. Just to recap, we talked about uh, the sort of landscape of Bitcoin ATMs in general and talked about them as one option for acquiring non-KYC Bitcoin. We talked about why that's important. And again, my goal in this video was not to say that uh, acquiring non-KYC Bitcoin is the only way that you, know, you can acquire Bitcoin. Again, having Bitcoin is better than not. Um, stacking more is better than not. But I hope this video at least encouraged you to think critically about what may be coming in terms of all the surveillance and empower you to now make an individual choice for yourself on where you want to be on that privacy spectrum. And so we then took a look at what that looks like with uh, CoinFlip. Now, of course, today I, I bit the bu bullet and was not perfect in terms of privacy. And so I did dox myself uh, for you guys, just to, to ensure we did this video. Uh, but again, if you want to do this perfectly, the way to do that is with text verified. And so again, all those resources are in the description down below. But I'm curious to hear what you think. Um, what are your thoughts? Leave your comments down below, um, questions, thoughts. But I hope you found this valuable and useful. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave this video here. As always, my friends, every sat counts, especially if it's acquired through non-KYC means. And until next time, I'll see you then.